Hello everyone, Bud here with Dependable Lawn Care and I just want to really quick show you guys my uh, aeration setup for this year. And you've probably already seen the AgriFab 48 inch aerator. Uh, when I first got it I wasn't sure how I was going to weigh it down to get the proper amount of weight. I finally came up with these solid concrete blocks. Um, All together I have about 175-180 pounds on there. Uh, this machine is actually rated for 175, so I'm right at the right at the max weight. But because of how dry and hard the ground is here, you know I need to need to really pile the weight on to get the penetration that I need. So that's what I came up with on that. I've had some guys ask about the uh, the hitch on this. So here's what I have on the hitch. Now this I didn't drill any holes. The uh, platform has these factory holes so all I have is a half inch hitch pin ran right through the platform I'm using the factory you know hitch and everything that came on the aerator no modifications there if I if I do anything it would probably be adding a little bit of weld on both sides of this uh, because when you turn all the way and this maxes out and touches the uh, platform you know you do have the potential to shear those bolts which doesn't really happen uh, very often, you know, it's you got to turn pretty tight for that to happen But uh, it could happen so you know just a future idea, but anyway uh, That's what I have there the you know everything is everything is factory everything's stock on the aerator I didn't change anything. I didn't want to modify anything. I just wanted to keep it as as close to stock as I could so So that's what I have there uh, as far as spreaders go, I have the the Spiker 100 pound, uh, and it's all stainless. It's the commercial grade stainless spreader, and then I have the Chapin, which is also 100 pound, or that's the weight rating, you know, uh, all stainless. And I use the Chapin for the grass seed because it seems to work best for the grass seed, and then I use the Spiker for the fertilizer because it's, it seems to work best for the fertilizer. And that way I can have both of them calibrated. You know, it's, it's always overseed. So I've got this one calibrated for the, for the fertilizer, for the overseed. This one's calibrated for the seed. So I don't have to mess with calibration when I go out to do a job. Now, and obviously I'll be using my enclosed trailer when I'm using this setup. So I've got plenty of room for everything to fit. Now, as far as product, it doesn't matter what you use. You know, people are gonna use different things in different areas. Uh, I'm mainly just talking about equipment. So we just ignore the grass seed and the fertilizer. I'm using a cobalt uh, two wheel wheelbarrow for the fertilizer. And that's just to make it easier to, you know, track it in and out of the trailer. If I go out and aerate all day, um, I'm probably going to use up everything I take with me, but if I go out and I just aerate for a little while, you know, half a day, I may not use all this up. So it just makes it easier loading and unloading the trailer. And then I have the Gorilla gorilla Cart, and this is the larger size Gorilla Cart. I believe it's rated for 1,200 pounds. And I keep my grass seed in there. I can haul up to six bags of grass seed on here, even though that's not, you know, anywhere near the weight rating, that's just how many I can fit, and then about five or six bags, 50 pound bags of fertilizer in the wheelbarrow is about what I can fit. So it allows me to get you know quite a bit of capacity that I can just literally roll in and out of the trailer. So this is everything that I will take with me, and then I'll show you real quick my, uh, my shop, my little storage building here. So I used to have a lot of material stored here. Well, um, that shelf isn't very deep and it just ended up working better to put other things on as you can see So this shelf that I built in myself, it's deeper taller uh, The bench itself is about waist height, which is ideal for loading and unloading products. So you're not bending over Not doing a lot of bending over so keep some fertilizer in stock here keep some grass seed in stock here this building stays dry. It's not temperature controlled, but that doesn't affect the fertilizer or 
the seed so I can keep this in here year round. And uh, obviously in a typical season, I'm gonna go through more product than what I have on the shelf and what I have in the, in the carts, but it's a good start. Uh, I don't wanna be one of those guys that shows up to my local supplier and needs you know, a thousand pounds of product and they only have 500 in stock or, you know, they only have four bags of seed left or, you know, whatever the case might be. Uh, typically, they keep a pretty good stock here, but I just like to think ahead, plan ahead. Also, I bought a lot of grass seed and fertilizer last year before the prices went up and uh, that's going to kind of save my butt. Now, yeah, I'll have to raise the price a little bit on product because to replace that product is gonna cost more, but at least I was able to save some money by stocking up last season before the prices went up. The, uh, the GCI Turf Falcon 4, for instance, uh, that was, I believe that was right at $100 a bag. Uh, by the end of the season, it went up to 120 a bag, and now, I don't want to misquote, but I want to say it's 150, 160 for a 50 pound bag. Okay, so that is steep and it's really good stuff, but it's steep. The just basic Kentucky 31 tall fescue that's, uh, you know, lawn or pasture, basically, uh, that is right at $100 a 50 pound bag right now. And that's in my area. That's, that's different depending on the area you're in. Uh, last year, the Kentucky 31 was about 80 pounds or $80 a 50 pound bag. So prices have gone up just like everything else has, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're paying for everything that's going on and that's, it's not anything that you can do anything about except trying to plan ahead and buying materials when the price is down, if you possibly can, and if you have a place to store them. So anyway, guys, uh, that is my aeration setup. We have rain coming tonight and tomorrow, which will soften the ground up a little bit so that I can get on these aerations. Uh, typically, the first and second week of fall here in southern Missouri is when I try to do my aeration overseeding, and that seems to be the best time. It works out the best. I usually have a little bit of downtime right around that time between the end of mowing season and the beginning of my leaf cleanup rounds. So, so that week or two that I have is when I try to squeeze in all my aerations. And I, and I pretty much have to wait for rain. If we don't get some rain, then the aeration stuff just has to wait because our ground here is just too hard. There's too much clay, too much rock, and uh, it just doesn't work very well. You know, irrigated yards, yeah, I can jump right on those anytime I want. Works out fantastic. But anywhere else, I really have to wait until we've had a little bit of rain to soften up the, the top two or three inches of soil. So that's my setup, guys. Uh, I'm not going to get into cost or anything like that. You guys can look up all these products. The prices change all the time. I will say that the aerator and bowl spreaders I purchased on Amazon, so you know all of that is available on Amazon. Uh, I have a Prime membership, which saves me on shipping and uh, sometimes saves me on the actual price. So that's something that I utilize. And uh, other than that, guys, all I can say is thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Get out there and make some money, and we'll catch you on the next one.